to an outsider, the business of freight brokerage can feel complicated. And when it comes to the on-time transportation of your freight, complexity is the last thing you need. With more than 17,000 freight brokers out there, selecting a company with the capabilities you're looking for isn't easy. Add in the fact that there are five main types of brokers, and each of them does their job differently, and the plot thickens even more. Will a traditional broker have the expertise you need? Should you hand everything over to a 3PL? What is a 3PL? Could a digital broker save you extra money? Let us help you narrow down your options. Stick around because in this video, you'll learn exactly what each type of brokerage brings to the table, as well as some tactics for choosing the right partner for you. Hi, this is Sam with ATS, and welcome to another edition of Beyond the Road on the Trucking Industry Channel. Let's jump over to Crystal to solve the mystery on the different types of freight brokers. Hi, I'm Crystal Lahr, Sales Director with ATS Logistics. Although ATS Logistics operates as a successful traditional brokerage, we know that we may not be the best fit for every shipper. Let's talk a bit about the different types of freight brokerages that you may come across in the industry. These are the agent model freight brokerage, a traditional freight brokerage, asset-based freight brokerage, a third party or 3PL provider, and a digital freight brokerage. Let's get started. So let's break down the agent model freight brokerage. Typically these agents handle freight from end to end. They're the ones that work on the customer end, giving quotes, booking the load, and then working on the carrier side, securing the capacity and seeing it through delivery. Typically an agent does not have a salary and is compensated solely on the profitability of moving your shipment successfully from A to B. Some of the advantages of working with an agent are that they work closely with carriers as well as the customers. They typically have a smaller customer base that they know very, very intimately and have carriers that they've gotten to know to support their customer needs. One of the disadvantages is that you really have a smaller team working on your freight. This may mean that if there are times off or that their workload capacity is maxed, you may or may not get the service or execution that you need. Next, let's talk about traditional freight brokers. Typically, these are comprised of a split model workforce, meaning there are carrier representatives who work solely with the trucking companies, and then there are customer service representatives who are working with the shipping community. Unlike the agent model, the employees of a traditional freight brokerage are compensated with salary and incentive. When you're working with a traditional freight broker, uh, the employees have a salary, typically, as well as that commission. Therefore, those employees can weather the ups and downs of the transportation market, giving more consistency into your freight providers, despite maybe some off-peak seasons. So what are the advantages of a traditional freight broker? Well, the infrastructure allows them to have a much wider variety of service offerings. Uh, the expertise that can be really honed in when there's different resources doing different things and excelling in different niches are what sets apart traditional freight broker from others. Let's chat about the disadvantages of traditional freight brokers. A traditional freight broker is not an asset provider. They don't have their own trucks on the road, so they really require strong carrier relationships. There is no guaranteed capacity, but finding the right traditional freight broker will help make sure that you find one with the right relationships to support your needs. You know, depending on the size of your traditional freight broker, the attentiveness that you receive may be limited. Some things to watch out for when choosing a traditional freight broker are the size and scope. If you're working with a traditional freight broker who's really large, you could just become another number in their customer base. Choosing one that's too new or too small could put you at risk of not securing the capacity that you and your customers deserve. Moving on to the asset-based freight broker. Just as it sounds, an asset-based freight brokerage owns their own trucks as well as has the authority to broker your freight to other trucking companies. Some of the benefits of working with these asset-based providers is that they have their own trucks on the road, meaning that they have guaranteed capacity in certain situations. They're also able to give you a broader reach knowing that they can and will reach out to other companies in the event that they cannot provide you one of their own trucks. An asset-based freight broker is always gonna prioritize their own trucks, meaning that because that truck and trailer on the road have such a high overhead, it is important and imperative to that business that they make sure that that truck is taken care of. One of the disadvantages of working with an asset-based freight brokerage is that their number one priority 
is typically their trucks. It's a huge overhead. That truck and trailer on the road have to keep moving for that business to stay successful. So the priority of becoming a large player in a shipper's network is second to them keeping their trucks moving. Let's chat a little bit about 3PLs. A 3PL is a third-party logistics provider that typically manages 100% of a shipper's transportation needs. Everything from warehousing to load entry to tendering to carrier payment is in their scope of services. In a nutshell, a 3PL can manage up to 100% of a shipper's logistics procedures. Some of the advantages of working with a 3PL provider are that they're very technology focused. They oftentimes have their own transportation management system or TMS software that comes with working with them. They really help simplify your logistics needs, taking it all in house. One of the advantages of a 3PL taking over all logistics operations is that you don't have to have the resources in house to do it. Some of the disadvantages of working with a 3PL is that you only have one provider giving you solutions. Not only is it typically more expensive, but your success in your transportation and the movement of your goods relies solely on one resource. Typically because a 3PL manages end-to-end -end solutions and they're your sole provider, you may lack some of the out-of-the-box thinking or solutions that working with multiple companies can give you. And lastly, let's talk about digital freight brokerages. These are really technology-driven companies that have algorithms and softwares that can really give you a rate quickly from point A to B. Some of the benefits of working with a digital freight broker are that they are web-based. It's quick access, you get a rate instantly, and so there's little interaction so you can quote and book a shipment quickly. And they can also provide you some of the cheaper options for shipping, which brings me into disadvantages. Being that their algorithm is helping match your load to a truck means that there isn't a carrier relationship on that end. So that cheap rate is able to quickly get you a truck, but it's purely transactional. Due to their digital infrastructure, their breadth of services is typically limited, meaning that most shippers only work with them for their legal dry van or flatbed shipments. Now that you have a better understanding of the different types of freight brokerage, you're one step closer to finding your fit. Make sure to evaluate your needs. Ask yourself what's most important to you in a partner. Is it communication? Try an agent model. If it's purely price, try a different broker. No matter what type of brokerage you think will fit, there are five common selection mistakes that you'll want to watch out for before you choose. Download our Freight Brokerage Selection Common Mistakes Guide now to ensure your partnership is as healthy as possible. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it to be valuable, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Beyond the Road. I'll see you next time.